rusty timing kit. Obviously it's Daco, but that's what they have, that's what I took. I want something better, but that's always in it. So as you can see, it's not really much into it. That's the belt, that's the bearing. One more important thing is about the belt. This is the marking if you have a, the gun which uh, shows you the timing. The flashing gun, strobe, stroboscope they call it. I think I got a different word for it in, in Polish language. Important bit about when you're putting your timing always the arrows has to face forward. So with the rotation of the of the engine. So if the crank spill spins that way, the arrow has to be always the same way. If you do it the other way around, most likely you'll fuck it up. The belt's gonna be ruined quite quickly and you can even risk of damaging the engine this even part number here or whatever it is made in italy so sounds genuine to me so you're putting that way forward tensioning from top pulley down to the water pump through the uh, guide pulley which is that one all the way on the pump bottom crankcase then you put that pulley on and you tension it upwards so same you tension it in a way to headlamp kind of 45 degrees upwards and you keep tensioning until you get to point when the belt uh, you cannot do that like 90 degrees turn has to be halfway so when is when the belt is fitted has to be some loose on it but you cannot really twist it that way so it's too to loose has to be like let's say 45 degrees uh, loose on it so you can steadily twist it and push it in that's a um, good way of adjusting the belt if you put it too tight obviously the belt gonna stretch crack quickly and the rocket camshaft will suffer because you'll be putting too much tension on it so that will wear out it happened to me before the guy come to me for the timing change and someone done that was a different car that was 16 valve i think citroen uh, and basically what happened they put too much tension on it it was so tight that basically you could barely take it off after losing the tension pulley and i took the um rocker cover gasket afterwards he said oh he's leaking so change the seals and when you have the camshafts basically the little like i don't know like rings the copper thing so the where the camshaft sits with the channels for lubricating and the first two was basically pretty much wear out there was the gap was so big that you can put i don't know if that you can see it like that like two mils so this goes literally under the camshaft so the head was fucked and you have to replace the head Obviously, the car was for sale. I told him to replace it or repair it, refurbish. So what we done on the end, I just put a bit of silicone on the uh, end caps. And that's what we left off. The guy driven the car for another six months. And uh, started leaking again, done it again. And eventually he sold the car because it was too much fast to fix it. It was not cost of fiction. Anyway, that was his daily donkey car to drive. So that's how it looks like. And I will show you when we'll be ready. Finally, eventually, after four days of going back and forth, I got the correct timing belt. Uh, I got the part number, which is listed somewhere here. And I will install it now. Obviously, the rocker gaff cut is still fucking wrong. So for now, I put the old one just to flash it, get things going forward. And when I get the right the correct rocker gasket covered, I will list the part number also for it because oh, for this engine, <coughs> if you have 1.1 MPE, it's a different rocker cover gasket, different timing belt. For MPE, it's 128 teeths, if I'm correct. And for SPE, single pole injector, it's timing belt, which is 106 or 8, 108 teeths. So if that's going to help someone in the future, then I'll list the correct part numbers for MPE 
engine. So you will have maybe easier way to get it done straightforward instead of waiting a couple of days and frustration of not being able to put things together. So catch you later when I'm going to put the belt on. To quick one to show you how to line up the timing belt. If anyone wants to do it, there is a notch here on a on a wheel and this has to match that notch over there on top. There's a little rivet there and they are in line. That's the one lining for the top. And then if you go down here, there's another line. Come on. Sorry, I got not the best camera, but I will try my best. So that's a line here and there's a small curve here. So this has to line up with the curve. That lines up and that's it. Then you use up the pulley for the belt. Obviously this one is wrong way gone. Then you take the water pump out, put the new one in, tension the belt and then you're done. And then the alternator belt goes on the other pulley which is here. Uh, it's manual tension so you have to take that bolt out, that one loose up, that one three bolts, push it back in and then put the belt on it, micro belt or whichever you call it and that's it you're done. And then put covers everything back in, seal the water pump with the silicon because I can see someone put the silicon there already so I'll do the same thing. Close that up, put everything together and then you're done. This is timing belt for Sergento. Probably will be the same for Cinquecento because the same engine, any engine which is fire 1.0, 1.1 or I think even 1.2. Any fire engines is the same procedure. Uh, it's me again. So the belt is on as you can see facing out that way. Just to make it more clear. You got the tension pulley there which is that one on the bottom. Uh, you tension it forward. You can have a special key for it or just use it with what I done. I just grab you for tensioning, you will need 13 mil key. The best one will be with ratchet building already, so makes life easy. And long spanner like that one I used perfectly goes in 17 mil that side. Uh, you put in it in. Where is the pulley? Basically, same time you're putting 13 mil on it. There's enough bracing here on that notch so it goes between what you do with it is just already it's been tensioned but I'll just show you what you're doing with it you're just putting that there and just moving it forward moving it forward till you get enough tension then at the same time when you're holding that with your left hand you're putting 13 mil socket tighten it up and it's done as you can see the belt been already on what I was saying before about tension it, as you can see here, this side is very good. And here, you can you cannot have like full turn because it's already will be loosed. What you have to do is like, if you're holding it gently, if you can get that enough, that much of tension, then the belt is perfectly fine. So if you, you should be able be able even squeeze them a bit so if you have like uh, one centimeter and then that will be half an inch loose here so that's fine uh, I will put now alternator belt screw that in and see if everything is okay after you put the belt always it's a good thing to do take a 30 mil socket because this is 30 mil obviously a bit longer one and what you'll be doing with it to make sure that is correct you'll be just doing a couple revolutions forward so four revolutions forwards if the lines which are here there and one on the top which is there that one there matching with the with the block across then you okay because if you just put it on and crank it straight away and if something goes wrong then bang boom boom and then you're done I don't know if they are 
collision valves or not because some of them have like Toyota for example if the brake snap if the belt snaps you can just basically uh, put new one on and no damage with that one I'm not quite sure I didn't done any research I'm just doing it the old way which I usually do put the belt on do a couple revolutions four or five revolutions see if the lines are matching if they're matching put other belt on it the alternator belt put the roller which is there that roller on put the belt tension everything up and close it obviously I won't be putting the timing cover because all the new one because the old one which is here it's kind of crispy crispy crunchy crunchy so it's fucking toasted so I'm waiting for a new one then I'll just take the pulley out again and and assemble it properly for now I'll just put it so it can car can run obviously it's not going anywhere because it has to go for the MOT but in the meantime to carry on with other services see how it runs and and that's it so that's how we do timing belt on fire engines anything with eight valves so I think that would be like Punto, Seicento, Panda, Cinquecento it's the same procedure for it same thing obviously if you've got two camshafts then you have to two lines to line up but it's still I think easy job to do you can find on auto data more information about it so that's how we do timing belt on Fiat Seicento 1.1 MPI I think same will be for SPE which is single pole injectors will be pretty much same job straightforward so that's how it is stay tuned guys and see you soon so timing is belt on with cover basket gasket is back on with a new seal I put water back in uh, as you can see it's still outside as I mentioned waiting for a to cover everything been done and I will leave it as it is let's say if it starts let's see if it starts just to quick video show you so timing been correct I run it four revolutions I even say even eight so let's twitch it and as you can hear it's running so everything is nice and full and correct no issues whatsoever belt civil belt in it but doing the job for now so that's how it looks like that's how we do that with belt in Sicinto. Have a good day guys and catch you later. Now I'll be waiting till we get temperature, flash the system, flash the oil and uh, put new stuff in. Brakes in, new brakes in already. You can see. It's turning nicely. New fluid, so it's done. Now we've got some bobs left and off we go for the next job which will be swapping the dashboard.